So now I just want to go over some notation that we'll be using throughout this overall course. And again, we may introduce some new notation and we'll give you some reminders um, when there's unusual notation used. But in general, we're going to use the following notation. So for the mass of a system, we'll use the letter capital M. Again, that's an extensive property. If we have a more massive system, then the mass is going to be larger. And we'll use the SI units throughout the course in general. And so the SI unit is, of course, the kilogram for that. We may also have multiple species, meaning multiple compounds that we're analyzing in a system or in multiple systems. And for that, we'll use a subscript I to denote uh, the subspecies specifically that we're referring to. Again, that's going to be an extensive property because if you have more of a particular compound, then the mass is going to be larger of that compound, again, using the kilogram for the SI units. We may also talk about the flow rates of different masses or different compounds into or out of systems. So for that, we'll use uh, this little subscript to denote that we're talking about a specific flow rate. Again, it's going to be an extensive property, and it'll have units of kilograms per second because the mass is flowing. And this will be more concrete uh, after you see certain examples. Similarly, we might have multiple species or compounds and multiple flows of those multiple species. So we'll use different subscripts, multiple subscripts in those situations. And that would again be an extensive property of a system with units of kilograms per second. So you can basically do all of that same thing, but with moles. And depending on the situation, we might want to use mass or moles. And we're really using the exact same notation here, except instead of an M, we'll use the letter N. And of course, that's going to be extensive. And we'll have um, units of mole or moles per second. This should say moles per second rather than kilograms per second. Moving on, for pressure and temperature, uh, we'll have P and T be the letters that we'll use for pressure and temperature. And specifically, we'll always be working with absolute pressure and temperature. Uh, and in general, we'll be using Pascal's for pressure and the Kelvin scale for temperature. And again, those are both intensive uh, properties like we talked about in the last video. Next, we'll use V for volume, capital V. That's an extensive property with SI units of cubic meters. Uh, and then specific volume can be defined as the volume per unit mass, which is an intensive property with SI units of cubic meters per kilogram. Similarly, we can define a molar volume. Here we'll use a capital V with an underline under it. That would also be an intensive property with units of cubic meters per mole. For internal energy, we'll use the capital letter U, and that would have SI units of joules. And then we can similarly define specific internal energy and molar internal energy. Specific internal energy is the internal energy per unit mass, which becomes an intensive property with units of joules per kilogram. And it, similarly, we'll use molar internal energy to mean that that is the internal energy per unit mole of a system. We'll represent that by a capital letter U with an underline under it. That would be an intensive property with units of joules per mole. So there's a lot of symbols here, um, but really the key things are to remember that mass is a capital M, moles are a capital N, dots indicate that there's a flow going on. So there's mol moles or some amount of mass flowing in a system. P and T are pressure and temperature, V is volume, U is internal energy, and then by dividing by the number of kilograms or moles in a system, we can make new quantities which become intensive. For example, the specific volume, the molar volume, the specific internal energy, and the molar internal energy. So you don't have to memorize all of these, we'll kind of remind you what they are as we familiarize ourselves with them, and there will also be more symbols used throughout the course in addition to these, but these are the basic ones that we'll use to get started.